Hi, I'm Kim Schmidt, and this is the second video chapter in the video series Amazon Aurora Deep Dive. The purpose of these videos is to help you understand and learn about Amazon Aurora, the newest database engine to be added to Amazon RDS, and Amazon Web Services' fastest growing service as of September 2016. The italicized quote on this page comes from Amazon's 14 leadership principles, invent and simplify. That principle succinctly describes what the Amazon Aurora team did when redesigning the relational database in a world where AWS exists. Every Amazon employee needs to possess these 14 leadership principles which is, in my humble opinion, why Amazon Web Services is so successful. If you'd like to read about the 14 leadership principles, visit the link at the bottom of the page. Section 2.1, Amazon Aurora's Architecture. This video chapter will dive deeper into Amazon Aurora's unique architecture than we did in video series 1.0. You'll recall from video chapter 1.3 entitled, What Makes Amazon Aurora a Game Changer? The chapter started with Andy Jassy challenging his team to solve the problem you see on the screen. In a world where AWS exists, how would you redesign the relational database? Jassy's team approached the challenge the way a true innovator would. We cannot solve a problem by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. Quote by Albert Einstein. Jassy's team used many of the 14 leadership principles when solving this problem. Not only did they invent and simplify, they were customer obsessed. They took ownership of accomplishing the seemingly impossible. They insisted on the highest standards. They thought big and they delivered results. Amazing, ingenious results. You'll recall this high level view of Amazon Aurora's architecture from video chapter 1.0 in video section 1.3. In a nutshell, Amazon Aurora applies a service oriented architecture to the database. They moved the logging and storage layer into a multi-tenant scale-out database optimized storage service. It integrates with other AWS services and it continuously backs up to Amazon S3. If you'd like to review that section before moving on to deeper levels, visit the link at the bottom of the page. What you see on the screen is a simple representation of an Amazon Aurora cluster. When when you create an Amazon Aurora instance, you create a database cluster. A database cluster consists of one or more instances and a cluster volume that manages the data for those instances. In this diagram, this Amazon Aurora cluster has one primary instance in Availability Zone 1. The primary instance supports read-write workloads and performs all the data modifications to the cluster volume. Each Amazon Aurora database cluster has one primary instance. An Amazon Aurora cluster volume is an all SSD virtual database storage volume that spans three availability zones in whatever region you're running in. It has two storage nodes in each availability zone for a total of six nodes for high availability. The primary instance and any Amazon Aurora replicas share the same cluster volume. The storage nodes back up to Amazon S3 for durability and availability. What you're looking at now is a simple representation of an Amazon Aurora cluster with read replicas. Here you see the Amazon Aurora primary instance is in availability zone one and has two Aurora replicas, one in availability zone two and another in availability zone three. Because the storage layer covers all availability zones in that region, 
you can place Aurora replicas in any availability zone you'd like, in the same or different availability zone as the primary instance. It's recommended to place at least one Aurora replica in an availability zone different than your primary instance for automatic failover in the case of an instance failure. As a comparison, let's look at read scaling of MySQL versus Amazon Aurora read scaling. Look at the left side of the image for MySQL read scaling. Whatever the master instance is doing, the MySQL replica is doing exactly the same thing. So even though it's supposed to be a quote unquote read replica, if the master only has 30% read, so does the replica. If you need more than that 30%, you'd need a bigger replica than the primary, or you'd need multiple replicas. Notice also that there are independent layers of storage. Those layers of storage have to be monitored and managed, and latency can cause data drift between the master and the replica, depending on how much traffic is going through. Now, if you look at the right side of the image for Aurora read scaling, you'll see that Amazon Aurora's read replicas have access to all the data the master instance has because of the shared storage, so they can focus 100% on new reads. No writes are performed by them. This is just touching on Amazon Aurora's architecture. We'll revisit this diagram in a subsequent architectural feature specific section in this video topic. Now that you have the basic fundamental of Amazon Aurora's architecture, let's dig deeper into the architectures that enable Amazon Aurora's unique capabilities. Quiz time for section 2.1, Amazon Aurora's unique architecture. Question, which of the following is not true about Amazon Aurora's unique architecture? A, an Amazon Aurora cluster volume is SSD based. B, Amazon Aurora's storage latency can cause data drift between the primary instance and the read replicas. C. An Amazon Aurora cluster volume spans three availability zones with two storage nodes per availability zone, totaling six nodes. D. Amazon Aurora uses a service-oriented architecture applied to a database for storage and logging. Answer. B. Amazon Aurora's storage latency can cause data drift between the primary instance and the read replicas. It's not Amazon Aurora that has storage latency and can have data drift. It's MySQL's independent storage layers that have to be monitored and managed, and latency can cause data drift between the master and the replica, depending on how much traffic goes through. Amazon Aurora's storage is shared, so the replicas can focus one hundred percent on reads, not writes. This concludes section 2.1, Amazon Aurora's unique architecture. Coming up next is section 2.2, Amazon Aurora's clusters and replicas.